Welcome. I am this week's host on the JMJ Missions podcast. Tonight we have a very special guest. We are joined here by our, by our very good friend, Kate McCarthy slash Hamill. So Kate's been our friend since about 2009. So we're going to get to know Kate a little bit throughout this podcast. But first, we just want to know a super random fact. So Kate, tell us like the most random thing that you can possibly tell anyone about yourself. Okay, so I don't have anything that unique or weird about me, um, but something interesting. Um, my first kiss was when I was five years old with my now husband. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. I had no idea. I didn't know that either. That was really meant cool. to be. Yep. That's really meant to be. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So today we're going to talk a little bit about buffalo wings, community, accountability, and then Kate's going to give some advice to our viewers about how to join or how to continue on the faith road. So let's pause for the music. Well, let's, let's, let's hit the music. <laughs> hit the, hit, yeah. Whatever that's called. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Let's first start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, I ask that you cover this podcast in your most precious blood, and Our Lady keep us under your mantle. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Amen. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So as always, I like to start off with a little bit of small talk. So today, something that's very dear to my heart is buffalo wings. <laughs> I love wings. I would eat them all day if I could, nonstop. So, but there's a, there's a heated debate when it comes to wings. There's two different styles. There's one bone, or otherwise known as a drumstick, or there's two bones, and I've learned that they're called flats. So first of all, there's a follow-up question, by the way, but first of all, what kind of wings do you guys like first? Let's start with Rock. Rock, what's your yeah. favorite kind of wing? Traditional. Traditional wing. Any feedback? or? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll give some feedback. I believe there's a lot of flavor in, in the bone. Whenever meat's involved and it has a bone, there's a, it's, it's just packed with flavor. Packed. And I believe you're going to get all that succulent, juicy goodness out of the meat when the bone's attached. And isn't that in the marrow? Didn't you tell me that? I did. It, it's all, it's all the flavors in the marrow, which means the marrow is attached to the meat in a way, kind of. Just sounds kind of nasty. It, so- yeah, it, it sounds does. nasty. Kind of nasty. But it's, it's delicious. And I'm a traditionalist. I will say I'm a traditionalist. And I'm very proud of my of my bone in wings. <laughs> very nice. Kate, what do you think about this issue? Um, so I'm not a huge wing person actually. Um, but if I had to choose, I definitely would go with boneless because nobody has time to work around that bone. And <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm usually like in a rush to go somewhere and I just I just don't feel like picking through that bone. <laughs> That's true. And, and it's so, neater. It's a lot. It's very neat. Yeah. It's, it's very neat. clean. Yeah. It's neat. You could use a fork I, and a yeah. knife. Right. I disagree right. with you, but it's neat. Yeah. I, I would prefer. I think they kind of taste the same. Chicken's chicken, in my opinion. <laughs> and I'm also right there with you with the boneless. Um, I'm just not in the mood for all the stuff you have to go through. It's like dissecting an animal. <laughs> right. Trying to eat a, a bone and wing. Not that I won't eat, you know, and occasionally enjoy, you know. The, f- the flavor of a bone and wing but like you know stuff gets stuck in your teeth i hate when stuff gets stuck in my teeth it's like a pet peeve of mine like just give me a fork give me a knife give me some boneless wings i don't care if they're just upgraded chicken tenders right. i'm gonna house them so but, i'm gonna house them and i'm gonna excuse enjoy me. it but <laughs> how much more is the glory after the grit um, that applies to everything in so life. okay the more the grit the higher the now glory me, okay. just saying all right now let me take your analogy and your, your algebra you're doing here on me and um, tell you that the glory is not worth the grit because the glory of there are a bone chicken and wings. The the, glor- there are, there are the majesty of chicken wings. The glory of a bone and wing is about the same as maybe like a seven and a half, and a boneless wing is about a seven. And for me, all of the suffering, the suffering that I must go through to eat a bone and wing the right way is just not worth it. And oh, don't aunt, don't get me started on, on flats. Flats. <laughs> First off, I didn't know that they were two bone wings. Neither I didn't know I. they were Mike Mango that. again told me. You want to talk about stuff getting stuck in your teeth? You try to eat any two bone wing without something stuck between your teeth. Like a yeah. vein. That's yeah. Oh, like vein yeah. The worst. Vein yeah. Yeah. oh my yeah. gosh! Like see right. what see what so okay. Would I rather eat a nice, easy, sauced chicken tender or a, or a veiny, like right, marrow wing? Hear me out, wing. Hear me oh, out though. Gosh. So. You know what dino nuggets are, 
right? Like what the kids eat in yes. like, the shop right aisle. Like mm-hmm. we all like dino nuggets. Yeah. I think boneless wings are kind of like dino nuggets for adults. That's a good point. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Did, did I you bring didn't, you to our side? No, are you on our you, side now? No, I wouldn't no? say it's quite the same, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think boneless wings are a little bit of a step up from dino nuggets. You didn't, yeah, you didn't, you didn't sway me at all. In fact, you'd kind of just... I, you know, I'll go dino nuggets all day. All right. Fair enough. All right. Lastly, though, for some redemption, because me and Rock are traditional. You guys are boneless, so it's two to two. So we can agree to disagree on that. But what about the sauce, though? So I'll just be quick with this. I love mild. I'll take mild all day, every day. So, Kate, what do you what do you go with? Um, I don't like hot food, so garlic parm oh, is 100% fancy. the way I'll go. It's a like Buffalo it. Wild Wings classic. Yeah. I don't like it. But anyway, <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm a honey barbecue I, you know, like if I go to Buffalo Wild Wings, something like that, I'll get honey barbecue and then I'll get half like some random, like, you know, exotic flavor. Yeah, you got to mix it I don't up. I don't know if they have the jalapeno anymore or something. Yeah, that's what I'll go with. And I'm just like you, Ant. I am a traditionalist. Mm-hmm. Mild. Nice. Mild. I do love my garlic parm because I am Italian, but mild. Nice. Sweet. And pineapple on pizza. All right. So now that that's out of the way, Kate, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? So like I said, we've known you since 2009. You've been a really good friend. Kate was there when we had our conversions. Like Kate had her conversion at the same time. And Kate, you're up to really big things like with your profession. So why don't you tell our viewers about that? Um, yeah, so uh, my name is Kate. Um, I have been a wedding photographer. I own my own wedding photography business. And I've been doing that for about eight years, I think, was my eight-year anniversary this past year. So I've been doing that for eight years. Um, that keeps me pretty busy. And um, yeah, I've recently married um to my childhood sweetheart we have a dog who is our (laughs) child and that pretty much sums up my life what's your dog's name tucker he's a two-year-old pit bull mix that's That's really nice that's a really good that's a wholesome name for a dog i'm very Very traditional i don't like anything weird just like tucker yeah i would just not expect tucker to bite anybody with the name tucker and that's a good thing yeah Uh and you guys were in the same grade am i right yes we were class of 08 indeed yeah. Williamstown. Kate actually filmed my wedding, Karen and I's wedding, yeah. not too long. Not mm-hmm. filmed. She shot Karen and I's yeah. wedding not too long ago, and she did a wonderful, wonderful job. I got to plug that right now. We were completely satisfied with our pictures. It was awesome. She was super professional. It was a great time. Um, so, yeah. Kate, thank you for real it. quick yeah. stellar yeah. pics. We'll, we'll get to this. We're going to dive into this a little later. But me and Kate, uh, because I'm the filmmaker in JMJ Missions, she's a photographer. We actually did some collaboration early on in uh, what would become known as Axe, our Axe Young Adult Group, which is kind of how our friendships became more cultivated and stronger. We're going to get to that, but we do have some collaboration together making videos yep. early on. Yeah, from the that very was exci- beginning. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. In fact, when we were back for the conversions, the Axe video that we made, it's a one-year video for our young adult group, uh, myself, Kate and Rocco all collabed on that. Yes. Looking back, the production quality, you know. I, you you got to start somewhere. <laughs> right. You got to right. cross br- some I don't, bridges. I don't know if that was on get... a point and shoot camera or if that was like a DSLR. It was not a DSLR. I, it, it, was not, it was not a point and shoot. It was not we, even close. We did the best we did. Windows we Movie done Maker. With what we had. Windows. That's all I got to say. Windows Movie and Maker. Wow. Again, I always go back to this. You have to go through certain stages t- to get to the next level. But we had so much fun making that video and putting it together. I don't think the quality even really mattered at the time. We just had so much fun. It was the laughter. It was the friendships at the time. And it was just a a good time in our life. It kind of takes you back. Like when you watch it, you can remember those feelings that Mm -hmm. we had right away. Just like that. So for our viewers, we always hint at our conversions. Trust me. We're going to do a legitimate video, like a Ryan Meehan style video on our conversions. But Kate, since you were there, why don't you tell us like what was Axe for you? Like how did that help you? Um, just tell us anything you remember about Axe and and how just it... a, as a reminder, Axe is the name of the young adult group that we that we became part of at Our Lady of Peace right. Parish, in led Williamstown, by... led by Father Maz, Carrie mm-hmm. Janice, right. and um, it stands for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> aspiring Christians taking a stand. Right. Yes. And it was huge for us. It was totally huge. huge. It was a, huge. A, a group mm-hmm. that that without that group and that support, yeah, we are tough for us to have. We, we might not be J. We might no. not be James J. Missions because yep. we were what in college, right? Yeah. Well, I'll let Kate talk mm-hmm. about that. Yep. Yeah, so um, I joined Axe when I was 19. Um, I went to the very first meeting. Um, I don't know what really brought me there exactly. Um, It was at a very um, transformative time in my life where um, I didn't really 
have any type of religion um, in my life at all, no faith, but I got a newsletter in the mail just telling me um, that our church down the street was offering a new young adult program. Um, so I showed up and um, the food um, that they had there took me to go to the second meeting. And then after that, after meeting all the people there, um, that led me to go to pretty much every Monday night meeting for the next, what was it, maybe eight years or so um, that we did that together. But um, that I feel like was a huge stepping stone into who I am today. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just was, it was helped me become the person I am today and um, really just, you know, gave me the faith that I needed to grow into my adulthood. So it couldn't have happened at a better time um, in my life. So I think that was a great year to start that. That's really cool. And Kate, was God in your life before that at all or, or not really? Not really. Like I went to CCD. Um, I may, I mean, I think I made my communion and went to church maybe a couple of times, but um, my family was not into their faith at all. Um, So I'm not really sure what really made me go to that first meeting, (laughs) but if it wasn't for that, um, I would not be where I'm at today. Um, So yeah, I had no history of any, you know, faith-based background at all, but um, just so grateful that I, that I did go that day because it, it just changed who I am today. You know, it's so funny because I think most Catholics, most young Catholics are in that boat. Like that's not weird. Mm -hmm. You know, you weren't like a bad Catholic. Everybody's like that, right? I was like that in high school. You know, you just, you know, you go to church on Sundays, some days you don't really care. You know, God, for me, God's like, used to be, God's like, oh, just be a nice person. And that's about it. And you don't really think into the, the spiritual realities and like deep things. So I think the Holy Spirit really drove you to come to that meeting. And one thing that I just thought of for any youth ministers or campus ministers or any, anyone listening would be the letter in the mail. I forgot that that's yeah. how the everyone found out mail. about uh-huh. it. Letter huge. in the mail. So, so the youth, the, the church, our parish, you know, having experience as a youth minister now, former youth minister, and now in other kinds of ministries, I'm really appreciating this. Our parish decided to send out letters to every single parishioner age 18 to 25 wow. to let them know about these young adult groups. So you have to go all out to get people out there. And it Kate, was very strategic. Divine, yep. oh, totally mm-hmm. strategic. Yep. And divine intervention. The, like that that little prompt, that feeling to make right. you go like, what right. the heck Looking was that? Looking back, I don't right. even know why I ended up yeah. going, but um, I needed it more than I realized. And looking back, like I. I don't know why I thought I needed to go, but I'm so glad I did. Right. And it came at such the perfect time, like you said. Like, all of us were kind of going through a lot at that time, which, Mm -hmm. again, we'll talk about one day. (laughs) But it was really – it was so, so needed. Yeah. Um, So why don't you guys give me, like, a little time. Rock, why don't you tell me how Axe was for you? Axe was something so new and refreshing in my life at that time. I never experienced anything like it up until that point. I was 19 years old as well. And we just had this community of – faith but a balanced community Mm -hmm. you had everyone trying to get into their faith trying to learn about the lord they they were passionate about their faith but they were also normal balanced just you know down to earth people and we would pray together and then we would go to like a diner together and or we would hang out on a friday night and watch movies together and it was just some of the best memories of my entire life, irreplaceable memories that I'll, that I'll never forget. So, And it, as Kate said, it really formed me and shaped me and made me the, the person I am today, it really molded me in a lot of ways. Yeah, and community is so huge. So, Kate, like, let's just pretend. Like, let's say Axe wasn't a thing. Do you think you would have ever just gotten into your faith without community? Or, like, how important is community? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I ever would have probably stepped foot um, – to mass or any kind of church function at all if it wasn't for mass but the fact that it was so um kind of geared towards young adults and Mm -hmm. making it you know balanced as Rocco said um made it more inviting um and more comfortable um for like-minded people going through the same struggles at that very time in life so um yeah if it wasn't for that there would have been no reason for me to just show up to church yeah definitely Mm -hmm. and I remember the welcoming environment you know, there are some young adult groups out there. Thank God there are out there. There's campus ministers. There's places that young people can do, can go for community. But sometimes you walk in and it just feels dead. People are a little a little awkward, you know. It's just when you walked into Axe that first year, people came up to you. They literally, and it was natural. It wasn't forced. Mm-hmm. They lined up to greet you. Yeah. yeah uh, I remember welcome. you said Carrie came up to you right away and you were like thrown off by how inviting yeah, she was. Yeah, right? I, I wasn't used to all the hugging, but all <laughs> that hugging has stuck with me. And now like that's my normal greeting. I mean, besides COVID, but um, <laughs> because of that, yeah, it was so welcoming and comforting. Yeah. And you know, communities can solidify somebody's faith. So some people community, like, like for UK, it actually got you into it. 
other people, it's like, you know, you, you kind of want to be good for a little bit. You know, people go through streaks, a lot of Catholics, a lot of Christians in general, like, oh, I'm going to go to church for a while and I'm going to be good. And then it always seems to kind of fizzle out at a certain point, you know? Yeah. But community can keep you there. It mm-hmm. can keep you there. So for me, for me and you, Rock, and you, you two probably, um, we had, for me and Rock specifically, had some really cool, almost supernatural, pretty much supernatural yeah. experiences. Yeah. But without the community, constantly seeing the, the pastor, Father Maz, constantly at Acts, constantly hanging out at the parish with some really cool, normal, fun, holy people, what do you think? Do you think it would have fizzled out? Yeah, absolutely. It, it was just such a great support system. And it's something that I needed, especially because it was so new to me. And I had a faith background. My mom would take me to church on you know Saturday vigil masses. And I went all through CCD and I made my sacraments. But I really needed that support system and that environment at the time to continue to to keep me there. Like there's just something I, I needed. I it's something it's something inherent in all of us as human beings. We need community. Right. And Acts really provided that for me. I'm very I will never forget, you know, how impactful th- those memories were for me and, and that that stage of my life huge for me and now you're in a point in your life you know where you your faith is more solidified you know it's, it's probably, absolutely. that's what did this solidify absolutely right? and, and it was the foundation for me and it really is the reason for jmj missions yeah it, i mean and i say that with so much um zeal and, and joy i'm very happy to say that acts is the reason for jmj missions so can i throw something back at you aunt what did it do for you in those beginning years? So it was huge for me. It was totally huge. I always believed in God. And again, like, I'm not going to go into my personal story, but I needed that. Like, I needed other people that were my age. I needed other people that knew, like, players in the NHL that, like, like to play <laughs> video games, like, even a little bit of Call of Duty and, like, stuff like that. Like, I needed to know that people could love Christ and also still have balance and not sin. Right. Like, it wasn't an excuse to go out and just go crazy and sin, but to have balance. And if, if I didn't have that balance, if Axe didn't give me that balance, I don't think I would have ever gotten into my faith. So it was gigantic for me. So seriously, Carrie and Father Maz, like, thank you. That's yeah. real. Yes, Thanks. thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, so something that comes with community is accountability. And one thing that was great is that we were all starting that journey together. And none of us acted like we were better than each other. Right. None of us acted like we were trying to be holier than thou. Like we were all, and I don't mean that in a prideful way. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But we were all on this road together and we were all trying to ascend together. And we would hold each other accountable. So, like, what is, have you ever had someone keep you accountable? And, like, how do you think that could help you? So, let's start with with Kate first. Yeah, so, before Acts, I really didn't have anybody to hold me accountable because, like I said, I I didn't really grow up in a religious household. So, there was nothing driving me to go to church um, or to pray or, or to remind me of God or anything like that. So, when I started going to Acts and started going to Mass on Sundays, um, I had a core group of friends who did hold me accountable. Um, And a lot of times we'd go to mass together, followed by lunch or breakfast. And um, if it wasn't for that, at that point in my life, um, I probably wouldn't have just went by myself. Um, And I remember saying, somebody saying at the time that it was almost like we had training wheels on during this time. Um, And they said, when we got too old to go to acts, our training wheels would be taken off and we'd be, you know, thrown into the real world of doing this stuff by ourselves. And so that's when the real work got put in and, um, you know, going to mass and still trying to keep up with your faith um, without the training wheels and without having somebody pushing you to go. Right. So, yeah. I would say uh, for me, the, the accountable, accountability part um, came with the fact that I didn't feel judged by anybody. That is huge because, you know, so many people really want community deep down. Like they, they need a good community, and deep down they know they want the Lord. They know they should go to church, like most people probably, hardly anyone does. But most people deep down know that they need it. And one of the first things that I think the devil tries to convince people of as soon as they show up to a youth group, to a young adult group, to any group, is that everyone here is going to judge me. All these people mm-hmm. think I'm a sinner. Yep. But you know what? Remember what Jesus said? I didn't come to condemn you, to, to not to point the finger, just to save you. And if he, who was perfect, is only reaching down to grab us and lift us up and not point the finger, then how could we, who are imperfect, even for a second, try to think of why you're better than somebody else or know the state of somebody's soul? And we kind of had that vibe in the beginning, big time. Everyone was just there to help each other out. So for me, being able to pour out my heart, my struggles to anybody in X, and know that they'd be able to give me some really good, non-judgy, but really good advice to help pull me back up to where God wanted me to be, huge for me i 
I echo everything um, Dan and Kate said. I didn't really have any specific person or anyone that stands out that really held me accountable. I, I'm not recommending this, but I held myself accountable, I think, in a, in a lot of ways because I knew how important and necessary the faith was in my life. I knew that that faith journey, I knew actually that God had put acts into my life and there's, it would be very stubborn and foolish of me to, after all he's given me to just turn a blind eye to it and just continue living my life. He gave me this community of, of believers of, you know, young adults my age who were trying to fall in love with him and were trying to uh, get deeper in their faith. And I needed that, you know, support. And so, yeah, that's, that's what yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah that, and that's awesome, Rock, that you were able to do that, like, on your own. Yeah. Like you said. Um, so I think I'll speak for me, too. And the accountability was huge. And I think the person who kept me the most accountable was you, Dan. And I, and I think I really needed it, too. But the thing is that you would always do it with love. So, like, I, you got into your faith first, and you understood more about it than I did. So you were able to kind of help me ascend. Like if I was feeling a certain way about a certain topic, you would say, well, Ant, you know, you should like take a step back, relax, and this is what you should do. And he wasn't doing it to condemn me. So so thanks, Dan. You always, you did help me. You held me accountable for a lot of things. No yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you still do. Yeah, so that's awesome. And you do for me, so yeah. it works out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so now there's a lot of people. I think sometimes there's some stigmas when it comes to the faith. People don't want to get involved. They think um, that if they get close to God, that they can't have fun anymore. Right. And that if they, if they get close to God, they're going to have to sacrifice these things that they, that they love. So, Kate, what would you say to someone who is maybe thinking about um, getting close to God, but they're maybe they're nervous or they're not sure? What would you say to them? Um, gosh, that's a good question. Um, I'd say that it's important, I think, to just um, take one step instead of looking at the whole staircase altogether. So just making one small step at a time of just starting with – you know, devoting yourself to praying every night before you commit yourself to going to mass every Sunday. Um, you know, just taking one small step um, into your faith before um, maybe biting off more than you can chew. Um, you know, going to church with a friend, just kind of taking baby steps. Um, yeah, I would say that. Yeah, it's perfect. Go you for know, it, um, it's funny because a really holy person and some saints have said, I think Padre Pio specifically said it as well, you're either going forward or backward in the spiritual life. You are never staying still. So every little step, as Kate said, a great point, however small is a step in the right direction, just make sure you keep going yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. Don't ever fall back. You know, you overcome one sin, then you overcome the next sin. Maybe the little sins and the bigger ones, right? Um, taking it from someone who has no faith life. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's a little bit of prayer, one-on-one, -on -one, then finally you, 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 get, you, you finally get yourself to like, you know, I haven't gone to Mass in so long, I've been away, you know, I, I don't want to go to confession, whatever, but you finally get yourself to do those things little by little, and you keep going little by little. And God is so proud of him when you do that stuff. And what happens is the devil tries to discourage you. Oh, well, you're not where you're supposed to be. Well, you're getting there. And if you're going forward, you are going forward, and that is a beautiful thing. So keep plugging. Keep going forward. It's only when we start falling backward that, um, that we, you know, we're really not doing well. I think another thing that came to mind, too, is that um, I think another thing that's important is it's, it's never been too long um, that you've been away from the faith to where you can't come back. Like, mm -hmm. I think that some people think, well, gosh, I haven't been to church in 10 years. Like, I can't show up now. <sighs> um, but I think it's important to know that God will always welcome you back with open arms without judgment. Um, and it's it's never too long to where you can't go back again. Yeah, it's like the prodigal son. Like, some people think, like, oh, if they may have taken, like, a little break from God or gone right. through some things and maybe just kind of forgotten about him for a little while, that, that it has to stay that way. But it doesn't. It really doesn't. You can always go back. And the humanness in us thinks that, that God's going to be angry with us, but it really, he's going to be thrilled. Right. He's going to be really happy that you came back. Like, right. There's a bigger party in heaven when one sinner repents than over 99 people who are holy their entire lives. Right. Yeah. And it's not, and you know, if you're looking at sins, even like overcoming sins, a guilty conscience being scared of sin is never as that kind of mentality is never as good at getting you to overcome sins than actually just being so happy that God loves you. When God fills you with his grace, you become so whole and so good and so peaceful that's when the sins start falling away not because oh i'm bad you know what i mean so you have that mentality god loves me i'm good then all of a sudden you don't need to sin anymore mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and it just like it makes sense like everything about <laughs> the faith mm -hmm. makes perfect sense the the reason me and 
Dan, me and you, we've talked about this before. Like, if people just step back for a second and, and thought, who am I? What am I doing here? Where am I going? What is going on here? Like, with life. They would have, with life. <laughs> with life. <laughs> Not with, like, the shoe size. That, you know, your, your yeah. Old Adidas. Not here at the apart. podcast okay, in good. life. <laughs> okay. You would find all those answers in, in the catechism, in the Bible. And I think that should be all the more motivation for people to really delve into those sort of resources and really get those answers. Um, I don't look at it as an intimidating, like, I don't look at it in an intimidating way. I never did when I was getting into my faith. I just found that the reason for all of life's answers and the reason we exist. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome, Rock. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, and you know, for those, everyone's different. Some people it's community that is going to help them. That's the focus of our topic today. Some people it's service. Some people it's, uh, for me, it was like the miraculous that really that really got me big time. Um, and for some people, it's the logical answers. A lot of the lo- a lot of the I don't know if it's right brain or left brain thinking. Do you guys know for logical? Logical, I think is right brain. Okay, left brain's creativity. Okay, so for some of those right brain thinkers, those questions to the deeper aspects of life of why does does God exist? And there's so many great resources. The Catechism. There's books you can get on why all the logical reasons for God's existence and why the truths of the Catholic faith and of Christianity in general makes so much sense. So um, the church can offer all those things. That's what's so beautiful about the church, the community, the sacraments, right? The, the, the answers, the teachings, the saints, like it's got everything. Like there's just really never a reason you need to shy away. Yeah. And like also <clears throat> it's not boring to get into this stuff. Like it doesn't make you stiff. Like some people think that you got to like walk around with your hands like no. in prayer all day, but that's really not what it's like. So like just, I don't know if you guys in can. In fact, it's no- freeing. Right? Yeah. Like, normally the people that are walking around with their hands together all day are the ones that are, are miserable and aren't necessarily right. as holy as right. you yeah. think. <laughs> yeah. So, and like, there's a lot of fun that can be had, like, uh, especially yeah. outside of sin, of course. So, um, <laughs> so at this point, I just want to talk for a minute, just like the importance of having Christ centered friendships. So all of us, like, you know, like I'm in my early thirties. Um, and I've had uh, so many different kinds of friends and I, I love all my friends, all the people that ever come into my life, like they're huge, but I, I can just notice that the, the friendships that are Christ centered are the best ones. They're the ones that last. They're the, they're the types of friends that will give you the shirt off their back if they need it. So if you guys just want to comment on like the, like how important it is that to make Christ centered friends, it kind of goes along with community. There's something about holiness that really stands out. And the, when you're emulating Christ, you know, you really stand out as like a light. As a, as a, as a, there's something special about you. There's something very different. And you know, when you're around that kind of person, it just makes you feel good because you are literally imitating the holiest person that ever lived. And the weird thing is, you don't even know it because when you try to think, I got to be a light. I got to be a light. Look at me. Like then all of a sudden it's about you. Mm-hmm. The people who are the holiest are the ones that are just naturally themselves, and they just it just comes out of them. Yeah, you know, and it doesn't light. mean there won't be hiccups and things like that. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with um, both Dan and Rocco. Um, the friendships that I've had that are centered around Christ have definitely been the most unique and the most special friendships that I've had. Um, they often tend to be the most loving um, and accepting and most non-judgmental. So there's something really special about those friends. Yeah, it's like the opposite of what people would think. They would think right. that like right. a Christ friend right. would be like someone who's like really judgy and say like, oh, don't do that and stuff right. like that. But that's really the complete opposite. Well, you know, right? and also when you have a spiritual friend, they tend to have a little more insight and wisdom because they're hooked up to the Holy Spirit. So it's not like they're just like, you ask them a question and they're just like, Oh, uh, you know, like, like, let's say you're going through a tough time and you're like, oh, so what, what should I do about this or that? And I'll just be like, oh, well, just, you know, like, just don't think about it. That's like the best right. secular advice you get is like, God, oh, just okay. Just like be yourself. Yeah. Well, like <laughs> you have a Christ center friend that has like deep insight into these things. They'll be able to break down for you. Okay. Well, here's what you might be doing wrong. And here's maybe, and you know, and the Lord loves you. And if you go to confession, you'll feel better. And they give you actual real concrete right. steps to getting back to yeah. the Lord. You know? and, they, and they do it with love too. And so, yeah, so that's just so important. And I'm so thankful that I have that. I mean, I have that with all you guys. So, like, this is so thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, at this point, I want to open up to you guys. If you have anything else you want to add to, to this topic or anything whatsoever. No? I think you guys are good. I'm going to plant another Easter egg then. So, if you've listened this far, I did this in the last podcast. <laughs> I, in the last podcast, I said, if you listen this far, um, comment on our YouTube video with a specific phrase. And then I'll pray a rosary for you. And, guys, two people did it. Two people did it, and it made me super happy. Right. So I'm going to throw another Easter egg in. So this Easter egg, if you have listened this far, 
go to our most recent YouTube video, which I think is still Dan's Q and A video, and just comment this phrase. Just say Kate was awesome on the podcast. Just, I'll say it one more time. Just say Kate was awesome on the podcast, and in a comment, if you do that again, I'll pray rosary for you. And I'm serious, I will. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm yeah. Here for that. So Dan, you want to pitch like all of our stuff, like our yeah. social media. So social media www.jmjmissions.com that is our website our facebook is jmj missions uh obviously this podcast you can find well you're listening to the podcast so i don't <laughs> probably need to tell you where you can find the podcast because you're already listening so that's a redundant statement and finally instagram at jmj missions please rate this podcast please five like stars. our stuff five stars that helps us out please comment on our youtube stuff our youtube channel again jmj missions that helps the algorithm any support you can get and you know what i don't feel weird asking for this help and the reason is because this is for god this has nothing to do with me or rock or anthony or even kate as wonderful as it has been to have her on this is about the lord mm -hmm. this is to bring his hope to people so by you by you helping us out hey there's simba <laughs> by you help there's really simba <laughs> can't wait to be king <laughs> again classic so, um by you helping us out and and spreading our our helping spreading our stuff and liking our stuff you're actually uh, in a way participating in um in the divine work of saving others and also guys make sure for our viewers you should check out kate's instagram she's an excellent photographer it's insane mm. thank so you so katie yeah. if you want to like pitch your medias real quick uh yeah so my instagram um is kate mccarthy underscore photography for instagram um my website is kate mccarthy photography.com yeah yeah that's awesome cool stuff. and she's really good yeah oh, really good you. what do you do what kind of stuff You're do you do good. um so i mostly do weddings with some families mixed in but mostly weddings and couples and yes. you, nice. do you still throw in the engagement shoot Oh yeah, right? still nice. throwing these free engagement nice. shoots yeah, free if engagement. you do her wedding. Yep. And <laughs> Kate she is, does your wedding. Kate is booked for like the next like seven years. <laughs> like, like if you if you live in like this area, like Kate's doing your wedding. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's good. Yeah, she's really good. Rock, Thank I just you. I just realized, Rock, that you didn't do a sound bite. Ooh. And it's just oh, I so, did not do I mean, a sound bite. We can go like, save music. it. Do you want to save it or do you want to? Why don't we do some? Why don't we have Rock do a closing music, which we will then segue into the really good music just to show okay. how much better That's rock true. is yeah. than yeah. actual as music. Yeah, same song because Dan, I love that song. Yeah, right? we'll do that same song, yeah. but rock, we'll, we'll just want to show how, be how much better rock is than yeah. the, the EDM right. music cool. we've been doing. Cool. So go ahead, right. rock. So spotlight's yours. Yeah, okay. Nice. <laughs> 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 So God we bless, just, like, right? Beat, like, we either just gained 15 subscribers lost. or lost like 20. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no in between. <laughs> God help us. Nicely done, Rock. All right. Do you want to close with a prayer? All right. <laughs> sure. Cool. In the, cool. the Father, the Father Son, and Son, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for, um, for Kate uh, and, and bringing her, allowing her to come on, and for answering that uh, that mail that she got uh, a long time ago. Now. Uh, to bring us all together, to bring us the community that we needed to solidify our faith. So every community out there, every youth group, every church, you know, every prayer group, every campus ministry out there, Lord, we ask you to please bless them, help them have the gift of true community, natural community, a community that will really enlighten everybody's hearts, keep people coming back so they can be solidified and affirmed in their faith and in their journey towards you. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ, through the intercession of St. Joseph and Our Lady, Amen. 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 Father, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> <Turn it off. laughs>